point precision and deformation awareness for uh, scalable and robust street face alignment. Then what is uh, 3D face alignment? Yeah, 3D alignment means yeah, we align faces detected on 2D images with a 3D face model. Yeah, in this example, uh, okay. yeah, here you see that the actor has some markers on his face. And uh, by, detect, by using those markers, we can apply some motion capture to this 3D avatar. Right? Yeah, this is typically used in a, a movie and film. But of course, yeah, we don't want to use this uh, explicit markers for this uh, animating 3D avatars. Then instead, we want to have some markerless 3D face alignment. That means we use 3D face landmark polarization, uh, where we automatically detect the 3D landmarks from a 2D face images. Like here, you can see that the landmark automatically detected, and by using them, we can have some 3D like manipulation of the face. Uh, this landmark localization has many applications. Yeah, it can be used for like face recognition verification, also face reconstruction, yeah, performance capture, and lip reading. And this uh, face landmark localization has been uh, researched a lot. Uh, basically, today I will, talk, I will be talking about some uh, deep learning based approach for landmark localization. Deep learning then means we use some CNN kind of network for uh, detecting landmark from a given 2D face images. A uh, PR lab, a uh, PR lab generate, can generate this kind of 3D face from a 2D input image. Then once we have this 3D model, we can naturally detect the landmark position from 2D uh, landmark position from this 3D uh, recursive face model. Uh, this technique is kind of good because you can construct uh, a 3D model and it also fast, but it may not be able to handle a variety of 3D or a variety of face expressions. Uh, instead, we can directly uh, regress the landmark position from a 2D input. Uh, here, uh, in this output, we simply regress or determine the position of only landmarks, then it's very fast. But currently, the pro proposed method can handle only 2D then direct extension for 3D regression may not be straightforward. A uh, heat map is like a very popular approach for uh, landmark localization using deep learning. A uh, heat map is simply a kind of like images, like single bells, one channel images that contain the uh, possibility of landmark position uh, into the space. Then this approach has been widely used for uh, post human pose estimation. And uh, this image was also usually represented as a 3D tensor. That means uh, in this example, you can see that the, each heat map can uh, determine the one, uh, the position of one landmarks. That means we need uh, as many heat map as the number of landmarks. Then usually, uh, this heat map based approach is more accurate than regression approach, but it's rather slow. Uh, heat, map was, uh, uh, heat map was used for human pose estimation. Their uh, stacked hourglass network was very popular. Uh, stacked hourglass means uh, this is kind of like hourglass network. Then stacked means we have like a sequence of this. Uh, in this case, we have four sequence of this hourglass network for uh, pose estimation. Then this step human hourglass network can also be used, has been also used for uh, 2D and 3D face alignment. Uh, in 3D pen approach, they generate the uh, surprise 3D feature point from 2D image in two steps. Uh, in the first step, uh, this part of uh, heat map determine the Fuji position of landmarks, and then they use this heat map and also 
uh, imprimis to determine the z coordinate of the uh, landmarks, then as a result, they can determine the 3D landmarks from a given into point. But in this approach, they use uh, like a quantized heat map, uh, 64 by 64, even though imprimis is higher, has higher resolution, they have a quantization and then they use integer indexing and argmax that uh, give us some less resolution, less accurate result on the uh, landmark positions. Yeah, to address this limitation of quantization, uh, some floating point precision has been proposed for uh, heat map generator. They are basically we use soft argmax instead of argmax, then uh, soft argmax allow us to interpolate the landmark position from the values stored in, uh, stored in the heat map. And also, if we simply use sort of arguments alone, we may have some overfitting of the network. And then uh, this JSD, some divergence, divergence loss has been used for regularizing heat map. Here you can see that uh, without this JSD regularization, the heat map is kind of noisy and it has kind of some overfitting. By um, imposing this uh, divergence loss, we have some like uh, concentrated heat map distribution. Yeah, in this paper, we we'll talk about about talk about how to address the limitations of the current heat map based phase alignment method. Yeah, we address two limitations. One is quantization, as I just mentioned. Currently. The uh, heat map is a low resolution, and in this example, you can see that this is ground truth uh, landmark position. And when we use low resolution uh, quantized heat map, the landmark position are aligned to the integer width. And then uh, you, have, you have some less accurate result. And another limitation of current method is that it doesn't have any low global regularization. That means all these landmarks are estimated independently without considering, without considering the co coherence uh, with other landmark positions. Yeah, let's talk about the first limitation. Uh, this stacked hourglass usually use some low resolution heat map because there are some constraints on memory and computation. Uh, you can consider that simply increasing the resolution of heat map, but in that case, of course, the all this network size will increase with the resolution of the heat map. Uh, also, you remember that I mentioned we use one heat map for each feature point. That means when the uh, feature point, the number of feature point increase, also the we need the, the num we need more number of uh, heat maps. And also, of course, when we have more stack, we'll, uh, we'll have the more complex network. Then usually, uh, our input image for phase alignment is 260 by 260, but we use the six, only 64 by 64 heat map. Then as you saw, uh, this kind of limitation happened due to the uh, quantized heat map. Then how can we handle the problem? The basic idea is the, the basic idea is to use soft argmax that has been used for uh, human pose estimation. Then what is soft argmax? Yeah, soft argmax is simply approximate the mean of a heat map value. Uh, this is the, this is kind of equation for uh, soft max. Here we have some value, and then the value here. This is the value stored in heat map coordinate i and j. Uh, okay, and then by having this soft, soft max, we can compute the uh, maximum value stored of the stored in the heat map. Then, by weighting this soft max using this weight, we compute the soft argmax. But in this example, the weights are actually the coordinate of the pixels stored in in uh, uh, heat map. That means here you see that. Uh, these weights are like double is the like, size of the heat map, then i and j are indexed. Then uh, when we weight, when we weight this soft max using this uh, coordinate index, actually the soft argmax will give us the position of the maximum value 
of the heme map stored base map value stored in the heme map. Yeah, that's the basic idea of soft arguments. Then now you can see that the soft arguments can be much better than uh, ordinarily original arguments with in, with, with the index because soft arguments can give us some uh, floating point accuracy. There are also all this computation is defined by some differential equation. That means we can include this soft arguments as the loss function in, in training our networks. And that is the main idea here. Then uh, we can uh, we can compare this accuracy of this soft arguments and uh, uh, arguments, soft arguments and arguments. This is an example. Yeah, in this in this experiment, we downsample the ground truth landmark to the low ledger heat map, and then we extract the landmark position from the ground truth low ledger heat map, and then scale the extract landmark position to uh, 256 by 256, and then we compare the expression method, argument sense of the arguments, and this result. Yeah, this table shows that. Uh, when we use initial index and argumax, if the hitman resolution is 64 by 64, we have this kind of like large error, right? But even when the hitman resolution is 64 by 64, if we use soft argumax, we can have some floating point precision and then the error will reduce a lot like this. And also this, uh, this row show that uh, the error of this low resolution heat map is very small compared to compared to the larger resolution heat map if we use the soft arguments. You can compare these two values. They are uh, almost very same. Here the uh, this error metric, I will define this error metric more clearly later, but simply this enemy is the like the difference between the ground truth and estimate the heat map location. Uh, landmark location and A AUC is the area under the curve. Like Here you, you see that the argument error is much larger than soft argument error, and also you see that this value is similar. Then basically, we use soft arguments for training our uh, landmark localization network. Again, our network is like this a stacked hourglass. Then here we have like one, two, four, one, two, three, four stack in this in this example. Then train this uh, stack hourglass. We have some new supervision strategy. Here uh, we use we use this only this MSE means era for training this first S minus one stacks, and then we apply uh, this error for the last stack in this network. And final error term is combination of these two, like this intermediate uh, MS error for intermediate uh, hourglass, hourglass text and uh, this uh, soft arguments error combined with this divergence loss for last part of the this network. Okay. And again, uh, this. Uh, Diverse rows can reduce the overfitting of this network. And uh, by combining these rows, we can avoid some competing competition between different losses. Uh, we apply only MSE for the beginning part of the network. And then we, mani we minimize MSE loss for the heat map there. And the final step, for the final step, we use the uh, arguments loss to determine the accurate the landmark position and all combine and also we use some like a diverse loss to have some regularization. Uh, we perform some average study to compare this uh, supervision technique with the previous one. Here uh, previously when they used the uh, uh, this argumax loss they simply used the same loss for every stack in the network. In the, yeah, this is previous work, but here we have some different, strat different uh, the supervision strategy. Then as you can see, our new strategy will give us more accurate landmark 
uh, positions. Okay. Yeah, that was first part, and the second part is that uh, <clears throat> I mentioned that another limitation of previous work is that it doesn't have any global regularization. Now, this is the right kind of visualization, visualization of the previous landmark, okay, landmark localization. Here you see that uh, this part of the this part of this different part of base kind of move independently. But obviously, uh, this part of, uh, these landmarks are part of a single phase. Then when the phase is uh, moving like rotating, they should move kind of coherently. Then to achieve that, we uh, introduce some kind of deformation course. Okay. And to handle <coughs> this uh, deformation aware uh, landmark localization, we introduced a graph Laplacian constraint. Yeah, graph Laplacian was proposed for basic deformation and smoothing. Yeah, basically, it computes this uh, Laplacian value using the triangulation of the mesh. To apply the idea, we first apply some uh, zeroing triangulation to the landmark of the given phase. Uh, these are portion of these are like uh, the bolt here, the vertex is a landmark of uh, our phase. And then we apply some zeroing triangulation and we get this kind of triangular mesh. Then graph Laplacian is defined by this formula. Here simply, this is the difference of the vertex position from the average of the neighborhood position, right? This is the graph Laplacian. And we can define this graph Laplacian operator by your Laplacian matrix. And <clears throat> uh, we use this Laplacian uh, value, Laplacian grade, Laplacian coordinate for our deformation uh, regularization laws. Uh, here, uh, in this term, uh, this this is the ground truth, uh, ground truth uh, landmark position, and this is the estimate position. And then we simply our Laplacian loss infers the Laplacian value of the our estimate landmark position is the same as the Laplacian value of the uh, ground truth landmark position. Uh, that means it has some deformation constraint by uh, keeping, by enforcing the uh, original original configuration of the vertex uh, to be preserved in landmark estimation. Then we add this term to our original term. I mean, this was the previous term. And then we add this term to this uh, position term. And then finally, this is our uh, loss for training our network. Okay, yeah. and this is this loss is for this part. I mentioned that we estimate three landmark in two step. First, has, first step is to estimate two D position, and the second step is the three D landmark, G quadrant of the three D landmark. Uh, this loss is for this part for estimating two D position, and then we apply the similar loss for estimating G coordinate. Here we again use the Laplacian coordinate of the G value, and then. Uh, this added to the uh, MSA loss uh, to regress the G value. And this loss is used for this part, the estimating the G value. Okay. And to train the uh, train test our network, we used uh, some database. And this uh, 300 WLP and AF LW2003 D data, data set uh, have been built from a uh, 2D data set. Uh, they apply the 2D landmark position. They apply uh, p shape phase fitting to 2D landmark position. And then they obtain the 3D landmark position from the uh, fitted 3D phase model. Uh, in the training, we, ha we have some augmentation, including uh, conmix. Yeah, conmix is to handle some occlusion in the phase. Yeah, simply convex is like that. We randomly sample some uh, box region, some box from the given data set, and we add, we, we replace some part of the face using the randomly sampled box from other 
other facing is. The by rendering sample, we can have, we can present uh, by rendering sampling the box from given input images. We can preserve the like a color distribution of the data set. And also when we place this uh, rendering sample box to our uh, sample image, we use the distribution from the normal distribution from the center of the face. And then to make sure that this box will cover the face. Then as you can see, uh, by having this convex augmentation, our network can be more robust against the occlusion. Uh, some quality result. As I mentioned, our uh, previous technique has some quantization error, like this. Here you see that this is ground truth, but here you don't see, you see this quantization error. But by using soft argmax, our technique can generate like accurate this three randoms, accurate random positions. And also another example, yeah, these are input images and these are uh, results from previous method. And you can compare that this is ours. Then here, these red line, red points are ground truth. And here you can see that uh, this is a previous technique. Then you can see that our technique is much better. Now some part our, our technique is worse, but generally our technique is better. Then also I will Give, give you some like quantitative result. For quantitative comparison, we use an NME. NME is simply uh, L2 error of the random position like this, normalized by this bounding box size. And AUC is the uh, area under the curve where we <coughs> draw curve for cumulative distribution of NME. And in this comparison, you can see that our technique is much better than all these previous technique in terms of enemy. And also you can see that these terms are effective to improve the accuracy. Uh, this is an AU graph. Uh, this, is, this curve shows the cumulative graph. Here, uh, the x-axis is, x-axis is, uh, Mm, like the enemy error, and this is like a percentage of, percentage of images that satisfy this error. Then here, the larger error under the curve is better, then this is our method, and this is the previous method. Yeah, we can achieve the same similar result for depth estimation uh, due to the, our uh, deformation of error loss. The average system show that uh, each term of our loss is effective. Uh, yeah, you can see the number, and also you can see here, uh, here again, this is ground truth, that by adding this Laplacian error term, you can see that this part has been more accurate here, and by having con mix, we have even better result. As I said, con mix can help us to handle these awkward images. You can see that all these Okay, the part of error handle now. Even the HND can be handled in uh, rainbow detection. Okay, let's skip this. Then I show some animation, some video of demo. Yes. There was I can take question. Now. Okay. Anyway, I should demo and for occlusion. So, uh, yeah, good question. Yeah, actually, uh, in this animation, we estimate the uh, landmark position every frame independently. Then it's kind of temporal coherent and also robust against uh, occlusion. Then uh, the, the robustness can come from two factors. One is the like landmark, the Laplacian loss. Laplacian loss considered the like uh, relative position of landmarks because we 
we compute the Laplace coefficient. And also convex can help us, could, hold, could help, convex probably help to increase the robustness of the uh, randomized detection for low cost. How about the global community? No, we didn't do anything about it. Uh, I was just wondering whether it could recognize the, the, the face speech variation. Uh, 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 I was just wondering if you, if you put on an HMD, so if you, if you start your feature, then you put on an HMD. Ah. Uh, can you track it? Can you also track if you can have it on in the first place? It looks like. I think in this, in this example, he wear the HMD from the beginning. Yeah. Ah. Uh, uh, Yeah. No, no. So there's no state. Yeah, no state. It doesn't matter. We don't use any temporal model. It doesn't matter. It's not recurring. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I think I'll ask. So, so you're identifying my box. So they're simply yeah. You can say that because the random each uh, each randomized is estimated from independently one heat map, but when we train those heat map, we have a Laplacian loss that may combine the coherence between random box. Uh, so, so I was just curious, like, uh, so, so those heat maps are generated from different coordinates of the image, or no, 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 whole part, whole part. Every heat map has the same size as the like down size, like a down scale size, uh, every heat map has the same size from the same, uh, from the whole input. Yes. Yeah, thank you.